Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Now, before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, today I'm doing the first of two wines from a winery I've become very familiar with over the past few years, Manchevelu. Today's wine is their white blend. Just to get this out of the way, this wine was provided to me for free. I have free reign to say and review the wine in any way I see fit. So my friends at Creative Palette have been sending me samples from Esperam for many years now. One of the benefits of this relationship, besides getting some cool wines every year, is my Portuguese, I think is getting better, at least pronunciation, over the years. So yes, the full name of this wine is uh, Erdogi do Esperam Manchevelu. Yes, I know it looks like it should be pronounced differently, but Portuguese is funny like that. I've done the background on these wines in the past. I'll link to one of those episodes for you to check out the full story. For now, I'll summarize who they are. So the parent company is uh, Erdogi, uh, do Esperam. I'll just say Esperam for short because it's easier for me to say. Uh, the area and the property have a long history going back to at least 1232. Esperam is located near the city of Hegenos de Montserrat in the Baixu Alentejo region. The tower along with the an arch and a chapel on the property were built in the Middle Ages. It was owned by many people over the centuries. Now, it wasn't until almost 40 years ago that wine was part of, the, of this with the first vintage being 1985. In the 1990s, they entered the olive oil business. Over the years, they expanded with a winery in Douro and more recently in a winery in Vino Verde. I can say that I've enjoyed every wine I've had for them so far, so I'm excited to try this one and next week's wine. Here are the stats for this wine. The 2021 Esperam Manchevelu suggested retail price is about $12. It's in the Alentejo region. It's 40% Antam Vaz, 40% Rupero, 20% Perum. It's certified vegan. The average vine age is 18 years. The soil composition is granite schist and clay loam. Uh, it is destemmed. They do what's called thermal shock. Yeah, so I didn't know what that meant uh, initially. So I, I asked and they were, their response is, the thermal shock that we mentioned on the technical sheet refers to the process of passing the grapes after being destemmed into a cold exchanger that will rapidly decrease its temperature around 10 to 15 degrees Celsius uh, in order to keep the primary aromas to avoid oxidation. As you know, we are in a hot climate region, therefore it is very important to keep the grapes as fresh as possible by harvesting at night, at night or the morning and also using processes of this kind. It is done before the pressing of the grapes, different from cold stabilization that you had talked about, because I asked if it was cold stabilization, uh, and performed in the wine to stabilize the tartrates. That's what cold stabilization is. Anyway, uh, they use stainless steel for their tanks for ferm fermentation. They use a centrifuge as a way of finding, wi finding a wine without an additive. It is filtered. The ABV is 13%. The pH is 3.2. And the residual sugar is 1.6 grams per liter. All right, let's get into this wine. Alrighty. So I'm doing my usual, uh, you know, big session of, of reviews here. So it's getting kind of late in the morning. I may not finish the entire set, do some more another day. All right, so, um, you know, it's light straw color, which is a pretty standard call on color. Ooh. So it's youthful. It's got a medium, I'd say medium intensity of aromas. 
I don't smell it way up here. I do have to get my nose kind of into it, but once you get it into it, it's pretty intense. But I get like this apricot, orange, guava, orange, I said orange, right, right? Mandarin, <clears throat> nectarine, a lot of orange colored fruit going on here. A little bit of chalkiness to it, a little minerality, a little white flowers. It's really clean smelling. I want to bring that up at some point in time on a Freestyle Friday about clean wine. I use the word clean differently than these people marketing their wine. It smells really good. Like I could kind of smell this for a while, but we need to get into it. So let's taste it. Ooh. So it's got all those fruits. I was talking about the orange, the, the tangerine, the, the guava, mango, papaya. A lot of tropical fruit going on here. There's something at the very end, and it, it, really, it hit like for a brief second, and I was trying to think about describing everything, and so we tried again. It was upon aerating the wine, this other flavor, aroma came through. It's kind of like a caramelish bit of honey, but I, I, it, it was really elusive. It's a it's a flavor I've had before. I don't think that explain. I don't think that description really is correct because, first of all, it shouldn't be in there honestly because of how the wine is made. But it's super delicious. And yeah, I can, I can feel the acid. I can totally feel the acid. Um, yeah. Now, they didn't give me the TA on it, but they did give the pH and uh, 3.2. I mean, that's that's kind of low. So, I mean, that's it's it's definitely a, an intensity of the acid. It tastes really good. It's refreshing, um, perfect for hot summer day because, you know, like the entire world is like burning up. Um, maybe not like the North Pole, but good Lord. But yeah, it tastes really good. It's got some complexity to it. It's not your, what I like about this wine and, and wines like this is it's not your standard same old, same old Pinot Grigio, which, okay, like last week's Pinot Grigio was just fine. You should try it. But like your Pinot Grigio, just your everyday Chardonnay, your Sauvignon Blancs. Um, these, and these are wines that I, I will enjoy. Sauvignon Blanc, and for the most part, it's one of, of, the, of the, tr the trio there is the one I like the best. This has like a different character to it, a little bit of, I don't know, oomph. It's just different. It's like why I like Viognier a lot, you know, and, and then things like, you know, uh, 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 White Rhones, those type of things. It's just, it's just not your ordinary, just like everyday wine that you, you get everywhere else. Hmm. I can't pinpoint that flavor, but it's really, really tasty. Yeah, if you find this wine, you should be able to, and you probably will find it in lots of places. Uh, you definitely should buy it. So it's like, what, 12 bucks, 13 bucks? Yeah, it's totally worth it. All right, I'm going to do it for today's show. If you enjoy what I'm doing, uh, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and then tell your friends, and we'll see you next time.